my name is Rachel and I'm here today to start a vlog off. I've got quite a few books by quite a few different authors and so I wanted to start doing some vlogs of me just reading a shit ton of people's books in one not sitting I'm, I'm not that good a reader but like in one period of time we're gonna start this with Colleen Hoover because I have a shit ton of Colleen Hoover books and I feel like they're very easy to just consume and finish we're gonna start this with the four Colleen Hoover books that I have that I have not read and basically I will show you the books and then just give you some updates on what I think about them as I read them and we'll see how it goes the first book we have is November 9 this is the one I'm the most excited for and that's because I feel like this is a really interesting premise for me. So this is about two people who they meet on the same day every year, November 9th. They can't be together, there's something in the way, they like live long distances away from each other or they're too busy or whatever, I don't really know. But they can't be together. They meet every year on November 9th, spend the day together and that's it. However, the man is a writer and I think she picks up some of his books. Yeah, until one day Fallon becomes unsure if Ben has been telling her the truth or fabricating a perfect reality for the sake of the ultimate plot twist. That sounds really good to me. It sounds like it's gonna like concentrate on writing and things like that, which obviously I really enjoy. This book is just, it's really short. It's only like 306 pages. And yeah, I just feel like it might be a fast read. I'm gonna enjoy it. So we've got this one, ugliest of all of the covers I'm going to show you, but yeah, it sounds good. The second one is in the same vein and it is Verity. I see a lot of people talking about this on like BookTok and stuff. I don't know whether this is necessarily be my favourite because I'm not the biggest fan of thrillers. I find them just a little bit too predictable and a little too much the same. Like I feel like once I've read one thriller, I've read them all. So <laughs> unsure whether I'm going to like this one. However, it has writing as a big theme in it, which is the main reason that I picked it up and I'm excited for it. So this is about a writer who's on the brink of financial ruin and she accepts a job offer of a lifetime. Um, so the husband of Verity Crawford has hired Lowen to complete the remaining books as a successful series. His injured wife is unable to finish. Lowen finds a autobiography or a memoir written by Verity that no one's seen, no one's supposed to see and it's just pages and pages of like honest truths that she's never told anyone. I'm kind of excited for it but again like I just don't know if I'm gonna love it but we're gonna give it a try. And then I've got two more so we've got Ugly Love which is about two people who have a very like friends with benefits type of relationship I think um, but they don't want to be with anyone and then their relationship takes a change and they have feelings for each other and it, should they actually make a try of it and get together. I don't really know that much about this book other than I've been told it's going to make me cry. So we'll see. I mean that's not a hard thing to do because I cry at everything. This one is 322 pages. Again another really small read. That's kind of why I've put these all together because I feel like they're all books that I can just like speed through and read really fast. It ends with those I read really fast which is the only Colleen Hoover book I've read at this point. And wasn't my favourite ever so I don't know why I've gone on a Colleen Hoover binge to buy a lot of them. There were things I really enjoyed in that book so yeah I'm gonna hopefully enjoy these. And then the next one is the prettiest of all of these books, which is All Your Perfects. This is the most beautiful purple I've ever seen in my life. And this is about a married couple. So before in the past, they leave their cheating partners and end up getting together for a perfect relationship, I think. And then it's seven years later and their perfect love is threatened by their imperfect marriage. The memories, the mistakes and dreams that they have built up over the years are tearing them apart. The one thing that could save them might also be the very thing that pushes their marriage past the point of no return. I'm just not sure which of these is going to be my favourite if I had to predict. I think my least favourite could potentially be this one because of what I said about thrillers. But when I read the back of it, it does actually sound quite good. It gives me a little bit of like Evelyn Hugo vibes, you know, because it's like an autobiography even though it's not an interview. Essentially this one, I feel like I got it because it's like the prettiest of Colleen Hoover's books and I really like the cover, but I don't necessarily know how much it is speaking to me. I still think this is going to be my favourite. This sounds really enjoyable to me. So yeah, they're the four books I'm going to be reading and I will just update you as I make my way through them. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how I like them. So I would just jump in and do a quick update because I have actually started reading one of the Colleen Hoover books and it is Ugly Love. I'm 100 pages into this book. I don't love it. Uh, I'm hoping that some things change at the minute, but for right now, it's not my favourite. So I'm just going to say now, this 
whole reading vlog video is probably going to be full of spoilers because I'm assuming anyone who watches this probably actually has read Colleen Hoover and wants to know my opinions on it. So if you do not want any spoilers, turn off now. I'm going to tell you some of the issues that I'm having with this book at the minute. The first one is that it's kind of boring in the fact that nothing is happening. When you have a book, normally you obviously have like the big plot that's going on and then there's two main characters in this plot that kind of involves the two of them and then they'd each have their own little subplot and then there might even be a few more little subplots going on that's just not happening there's the main plot which is like the romance plot a backstory flashback type plot which i'm not enjoying because i hate the way it's written it's making me so angry that it's all like on separate lines and not described properly not enjoying that at all uh, and i don't know why that's happening because when i read it ends with us she did a lot of flashback scenes in there and i didn't mind the writing of those they were written properly but in this She's not writing him properly and I don't know why. <laughs> it's really bothering me. But yeah, they're the only two plot points that are going on. And like, there's no subplot going on with the main, main character who's like the woman that we're following for most of this. Which is just, it's just making me angry because it's just making it a bit boring. And that, teamed with the fact that it's all in the same setting is just, yeah, it's just all working to just make it a bit boring. Everything at the minute is happening in a flat or in the flat across the way or in the lift <laughs> like just everything in the whole book at the minute they've gone away and it's been nice i've actually found it a bit refreshing it's made me pick the book up more because they went away to her parents house for was it thanksgiving or easter or something and so that was nice because they've gone somewhere else but they're currently on their way back <laughs> To the same old setting. I'm hoping that things get thrown around, bounce around some different settings and have some more action going on because I'm just finding it a little bit dry at the minute. Like the romance is alright, I don't mind it. It's a bit annoying but I'll get on to that in a minute but it's okay. So I feel like I would enjoy this book if it was the romance and it had the other stuff. I just feel like the other stuff is lacking, which is, you know, a bit sad. And yet, the other thing that's annoying me <laughs> is that I'm just finding it a little bit unbelievable because the main character is meant to be a nurse and she is training. And so she's doing her training stuff and she's also doing nursing on the side. Now, I live with someone who works in the NHS. She has run off her feet all of the time and when she gets home she's like straight into bed she's always tired and can sleep at the drop of a hat because it's always swapping from day shifts to night shifts to night shifts to day shifts to day shifts to night shifts like all of the time they never finish on time they don't do any days that are pretty much that are shorter than 12 hours honestly it's just not a very accurate representation because she's never really tired and she's not run off of me she's not do you know what I mean? Like, it's just... I'm just finding it difficult. I don't feel like it's the most realistic portrayal. However, like I said, I'm only 100 pages in. I'm not even halfway yet. So I think there's still space for there to be more plot going on, more details coming in, like, more stuff. I feel like if it was halfway, it'd really annoy me. But we've still got time. We're still kind of in the beginning of the book. So I'm hoping for good things. We'll see if they happen. Thought I would do an update. I am on 162 at the minute. I can't say that I love this book. At the minute, because of the Sally Rooney video as well, I'm reading these two books. And this book I started beforehand. And since I started this book, I have only read 162 pages and have instead managed to pick this up and read quite a lot of this read a short story by uh, Sally Rooney as well and start the audiobook for this book which I'm really enjoying. All to say it's happening because I am not in love with this. It's not like the relationship's all right in it. I don't hate the relationship that's going on. I don't hate the characters. It's just a little bit lacklustre for me. There's a lot of intrigue being placed on the past and on what's come before and so I'm hoping that that starts to come into it soon and that the reason there isn't a lot of plot going on is because that's going to come into it and like meet with the plot going on at the minute and get the ball rolling if you will. 
because I'm halfway through this and to feel like the ball's not rolling yet with the story at halfway is not how I want to feel. I don't hate it. If I had to rate it now, I'd probably give it like two stars, which two stars is still an I like it. It's just not a I love it. It's not like that I see anything that I adore in it. Like it's just a very basic like it was okay. I didn't hate it. <laughs> so right now it's sitting at a two star. I'm hoping that it, you know, takes off. Maybe it will, who knows? Hello, so I'm about to film my wrap up for the last few months, but I wanted to quickly do an update for how I found Ugly Love because I finished it the other night and I have some feelings. <laughs> I ended up giving this book two stars. That's because it was okay. But the thing that made me angry with this book is there were a lot of good things and a lot of potential and I just felt like it wasn't capitalised on and it made me angry and that's why I can't really give it a higher rank than that even though there's parts of it that maybe could get a higher rank. So if we discuss for a minute those things that I wasn't keen on, one of the things was the whole end, like the big, I'm going to spoil it, the whole dramatic thing with Miles and what happened with his past. I'm one of those people who like, I will cry at anything. So this should have made me cry. That whole thing that happened would make me cry in any other book. And it didn't make me cry in this. And it's because of the writing style of those sections. It's because we were told through those sections that were miles. And I've told you before, I hated the way it was written. That sort of step by step, sentence after sentence. After that happens, we start getting some chapters that are from Miles' perspective, like in the modern day, and they're written properly. I really enjoyed them. And when he went to see his ex, and they had that conversation, I didn't cry, but I could feel myself getting affected by it. I could feel myself welling up. When he finally went and told Tate everything that had happened to him, again, I could feel myself welling up. And I was thinking, it literally is just because those sections weren't written properly. Like, why don't you just write them properly? It made all the flashbacks seem unimportant because they weren't written properly. And he kind of painted puppy dog, like person in love. And I was like, if I'm completely honest, I'm probably cheesier now in my relationships than I was at 18. Just the way that it had him speaking was so immature and so unrealistic. I genuinely don't think he would have spoken like that, that it just made me annoyed and it did not work for me. So hated that, made me angry. Again, we didn't have a lot of plot going on. Towards the end, it did do the thing that I thought it would where it picked up with the plot about Tate's past and effect in the future. And so there was a lot going on, but again, it still doesn't make up for how little there is going on for the first half of the book. It needed a little bit more plot going on. Ian was a character that I really liked in this book. He was never used to his full potential. I was really expecting Tate to go to him and for Ian to tell Tate what had happened. I wanted a bit more from Ian in this. There's no growth whatsoever in her brother. Like, her brother's just still the exact same all the way through, which annoyed me a little bit. Like, it wasn't the worst story I've ever read. Because it had the potential to be so good, it made it seem like a worse book in the end. Because I was like, you had all that potential and that's all you did with it? Really? So yeah, that was Ugly Love. That's my update for that one. It has been a while. I was reading a book on ebook from my library's overdrive system and I reached the limit so I was gonna lose it. I seen it in a bookshop and it was pretty cheap. If you live in England, it was in the works so you know how cheap it was. <laughs> and so I decided to pick up a copy and it is without merit. And so I've been reading this. So this one is about Merit, beginning premise. She gets kissed by a random guy in the town square where she lives. She's like, oh my God, what the hell? Why is this random man kissing me? But I kind of like it, I like him. And then finds out that he is actually her twin sister's boyfriend and he just mistook her for her twin sister. And that's kind of the premise initially. I am really enjoying this so far which is why I picked up a copy. So I haven't read any of it physically yet because I've literally only just um, got the book but I'm on page 59. I'm really enjoying it. So my favourite things at the minute are the setting. I love that they live in this like old church that's kind of been converted and there's a lot of like family history in here about the neighbours they've had, about the parents splitting up and getting with new people and illnesses and there's just a lot of info which usually I don't think I'd enjoy it's very info dumpy but I'm actually really getting into it and they're kind of the bits that I'm 
really vibing with so i think this might be a little bit of a standout for me in terms of holly and hoover because at the minute it's probably the best start to one of her books that i have had i know with it ends with us i found it very cheesy for quite a bit of the beginning <laughs> ugly love i didn't really gr like that much i mean i didn't really like the whole thing that much but at the beginning i remember i really wasn't that keen this might be a good turnaround i might really enjoy this one so we'll see so that's my update of how colleen hoover's going but i can tell i've not filmed anything in a while because the amount of dicking around i've just done on this camera is <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> did not have fun with that i did do a bit of an update because i was reading without merit i was reading this on ebook and I wanted to get a physical copy because I was enjoying it so much that I was like, oh, I want to read it properly, then I'll read it faster. I'm on the exact same point that I was in the ebook. I haven't read any of it. However, I have an update, so I've actually read another Colleen Hoover book. I'm not updating you during the read um, because I think I read it in like a day and a half, something ridiculous like that. I didn't uh, slow down enough to have done an update. But it was november 9 got some feelings um i've got some things to talk about if you remember from the beginning of this vlog i'm assuming i explained november 9 is about two people who they keep meeting on november 9 because they can't be together or they don't want to be together at that point so they decide they're going to meet up on november 9th for the next five years and if in five years they want to get together then perfect and this story literally just begins and ends on november 9th every year i adored it it's definitely my favorite colleen hoover that i've read i gave it four stars in the end i had a little bit of an issue with the ending however the rest of the book still got it up there so i was really really happy with it i was listening to this because i have to do a lot of book admin in my job if you don't know i'm a library manager so a lot of my job involves like the general admin of books so like putting uh, barcodes in them putting the date things in them putting covers on them like putting them in the system all that sort of stuff so i adore doing that but it takes time especially if you've got a lot of new orders which i do so i've been doing all that while i've been at work and i've been listening to a lot of books and so november 9 is one of the ones that i picked up on an audiobook and i'm so glad that i did so i read it so ridiculously fast when in the story you find out what happened i did not see it coming at all the like twist obviously like she goes in the cupboard she finds this manuscript because he's been writing this book about the meeting and i genuinely thought that it was going to be that he had kind of fabricated these feelings that he had for her because he wanted a good story and that he didn't really like her at all that much which i wasn't very excited about because fallon was really lovely so i was really not excited about that being the storyline but i genuinely 100 percent thought that was going to be it obviously then you start reading about this fire where it says two years before or it says the girl that got burnt in the fire or it says something that makes you click instantly what it is and i remember literally <laughs> sat at my desk and i was covering these books and i remember just being like and just like staring forward <laughs> like i don't even know how long because i literally was just like what the fuck what the actual fuck um I loved it. I did not see it come in, so I loved it so much more. So yeah, that was a really cracking twist. And I liked the way that they wrote it as well. The way that the stuff happens with his mum and the way that her father's involved. Like, I thought all the story of it was really, really good. I enjoyed all the little characters as well. Like, the side characters, the family, the friends. Like, everyone was really fun in it. Ben was so lovely. Like, I have a tendency to be quite negative about myself. And he really reminded me of... Um, my fiance like my fiance will literally if i say anything negative about myself she'll literally be like i will punch you in the face fucking shut up like she <laughs> hates it so much he just really reminded like ben really reminded me of that loved him and then yeah the only issue i had the only reason it's not five stars because i loved the characters i loved the story i loved their like a banter together i loved it when she was on that date with someone and he just came in and was like i'm not being funny but she was my soulmate and you're kind of in the way that was super cute so yeah the only issue i had is that she reads it and a second later she's at his house forgiving him i completely understand the forgiving him i understand that she realizes that it's so much bigger than just 
him going round and starting a fire in a house it wasn't like that and there's so much grief he was suffering with and all of these things and I understand that all of that played a part and that's the reason that she can forgive him my issue was with the speed at which she forgave him because I just think if there was something that bad and it had such a big impact on your life it ruined the way that you saw yourself and your own confidence. Sounds like she was really self-confident. She had herself made with a job. She's had to change a lot of things that she wanted because of that. And even though it might not be something that is somewhat to blame on him, it is still something massive that happened. So I don't know. I just thought it was a bit quick that she literally immediately went and forgave him. They were kissing and it felt a bit much. I feel like if she'd have gone and forgiven him and been like, I feel like we could work on this but you might have to give me some time do you know what I mean like just just a little little bit of separation because it just fell a bit I wish I were gonna do that that fast that was my November 9 reader this is the best Colleen Hoover I've read so much better than Ugly Love because obviously as I've mentioned that one's not that great for me it ends with us I really liked things about that book but I really didn't like the relationships between characters in that book I find them so fucking cringe and the way that they speak to each other especially like if they're gonna have sex or whatever it's just it wasn't realistic at all and I thought that they found this one really realistic they only have a day together and they don't like rush to have sex with each other till years down the line because yeah they're only gonna have met for a day like and I just like that was really realistic for me her other books could do with looking at this one <laughs> I want to continue with Without Merit because I was really enjoying this and don't want to get to the point where I have to restart it because I've forgotten because I'm Oh, well I'm only 59 pages in but I do really want to read this so I'm probably going to try and continue with this this weekend because this is the weekend where there's an extra bank holiday on the Monday because of the Queen's funeral so I've got a bit of time off work so I might try and dip back into this one but I am reading another book um I'm reading the Carrie Soto Taylor Jenkins read book which is really good so far so I'm not sure whether this is going to get a look in but we'll see and then the other two books so Verity I'm planning to read next week in work because I have the audiobook of this one so I feel like this would be a good audiobook one because it's like thrillery and then All You Perfects is probably going to end up being the last one that I read and then somewhere in that as well I've also nearly got heartbones I tried taking heartbones out from the library so long ago I swear it's still not coming it's still on my reserve list I don't get it till the 23rd of October so unsure whether I will read it during this vlog but I do want to read heartbones um which is a Colleen Hoover that I've kind of added onto this list just because it was on the library overdrive thing so yeah we'll see how that goes and I'll update you at some point I'm sure I've not updated this vlog for a while but this is going to be my last update for it because it is 29th of December and I number one don't want to be carrying a video into the new year like I want to finish this video and get it edited because I already think it's going to be really long and also I don't think I'm going to read any more Colleen Hoover books for a while I feel very Colleen Hoovered out from this year because I've read quite a few so yeah I wanted to do an update today for the book that I have read well I finished it yesterday so I have read another Colleen Hoover and then I thought I'd do a quick ranking of the books I've read four of her books this year and to other people I feel like that might feel like it's only four but to me that's a hell of a lot because I don't go back and read the same author over and over and over again unless it's someone I love but even then like I had Louise O'Neill books to read but I still spaced them out over years because I don't like staying with the same author for too long because the writing style is just so similar across the books. That is why I feel a bit Colleen Hoovered out and I'm not going to be reading anymore for a while. I do have three other books but yeah I'm going to leave them. So first I want to do the update which is the other book that I've read. So I've read now It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover obviously. I did say when I finished It Ends With Us that I didn't know if I was going to read this book and I did end up reading it. It was really difficult because I read this book and I was immediately like oh that's three star like basic middle of the ground um I liked it it was better than it ends with us in my opinion just in the way that I don't like how it ends with us handled some things and I feel like it's handled better in this book and we kind of get a little bit of a resolution for the things that I didn't like and it ends with us mainly to do with the treatment of Ryle as a character 
You know, like he has a very sympathetic view and it ends with us. I understand why it's there because that is a person, that is a real person feeling real feelings. However, it kind of, it makes you feel like there's a bit of like condoning going on. And like when you go on Goodreads and stuff, there's still people who are like, oh my God, I wish you got with Viol. And it's just like, I don't know, like there needed to be a clearer boundary there. If that makes sense. So I really enjoyed this book because I feel like that boundary came in. This is actually a dangerous situation and we need to have things on file and blah, blah, blah. Like it was just, I liked that aspect of it. But it did make me think that when I went on my Goodreads, I'd given it ends with those three stars as well. And I was like, that's not the same as this. So maybe that one's like two, two and a half. I'd probably give it two and a half, yeah. Um, so it's changed my opinion on what it ends with us is I'm not given a full synopsis of this because I kind of don't want to spoil it even though if you're this deep into this video you're probably a Colleen Hoover fan anyway so you don't care if I spoil it <laughs> but I don't want to go too into detail I did really enjoy it to be honest I really enjoyed it in the way that I thought the relationship that Atlas was having with his brother was so interesting and the other kid who's like his therapist all of that whole situation was amazing. I've really enjoyed that. Yeah, Lily's just a bit boring, to be honest. And I don't think she handles situations very well. Um, but she did do better in this book. So I liked this. I think this is one of her better ones. I thought I would do a quick ranking. But I have to put them on screen because the books, once I read books, I just send them back to my mum and dad's. So in last place hated it is not a good book it's probably my worst book of the year ugly love i did not like that book at all i just there was no need for that book it is written in the most ridiculous childish way that i just think is pathetic like there's flashbacks in this book there's flashbacks in it ends with us and she writes them properly so i don't understand why she felt the need to write the ones in ugly love like she was in primary school but they're written terribly and I hate them. I don't really appreciate anything in that book like I just just all a toxic mess and there's no part of me like at the end of it I wasn't like oh yay they're gonna get together I was just like oh god like she really after all of this she's really gonna go there really? So yeah I didn't enjoy that one. In spot number three we have It Ends With Us. I would say if I had read a few more Colleen Hoover books it probably would rank higher in the books than other ones. It is a good book and I like that it's talking about domestic abuse and I like that it does try and tackle that area of actually when you're in it it's not as easy, not as black and white because you are going to lose this person that you love so much and that you can kind of argue with yourself that oh well they won't do it again or blah 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 and I did enjoy it but I had my issues with it and it's very cringe at the beginning um, so so cringe that is one thing I've learned about Colleen Hoover she is a cringe queen it's a lot <laughs> it's a handle we have it starts with us I did really really enjoy this I don't enjoy that this sticker is part of the cover and I can't take it off do not enjoy that at all. But yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I thought that it was written in a really good way of targeting some of the criticisms that it ends with us had. So things like condoning domestic violence and him never getting any sort of consequence for what he did. And I can see that that route is being taken more in this book. And I appreciate that. So I did really enjoy this book and I will put it at number two, so it's higher than it ends with us. In first place is November 9. So I had my issues with November 9. I think the ending is a bit cringe and I don't necessarily think it would happen as quickly as it happened. However, the way through that book and the journey of that book was much more enjoyable than any of her other books. And I think part of that is because it was on one day, she couldn't rush it and so there aren't like these ridiculously cheesy sex scenes and stuff. It's more like to the point because it's all on one day and I think that served the plot a lot better. I didn't see the twist coming in that, that was quite fun for me. That's that's where I'm at, November 9's top, definitely the one I've enjoyed the most. I don't think I'll be picking up another Colleen Hoover for a while, however I do have three more and I do intend to read them at some point so obviously we've still got without merit. I've mentioned this before of wanting to finish this and I still want to finish it but it's one of those where I've left it too long and I need to start it again and I don't want to start it yet because I feel like 
I just, I just need a break from Colleen Hoover for a little while. She has some very toxic characters and yeah, just need a bit of space from that. So I will read this, but probably in like the latter half of next year. Then annoyingly, we have Verity, which is one I really wanted to try and get to in this video, but I just, yeah. I'm just not in the mood at the minute and I want to finish this vlog because I feel like this vlog is really long. So this, yeah, I'll probably make another video reading the other ones if you'd be interested in that, let me know. And then lastly, we have All You Perfects, which is the one that I thought I would really, really enjoy because the cover's stunning. Again, not managed to get to it. So I will probably do a, another vlog in the future where I read another set of Colleen Hoover books. If you'd be interested in that, let me know but it will probably not be till the latter half of 2023 anyway if i did that which i don't know if i would in 2023 because 2023 is going to be a busy year anyway if you got to the end of this video thank you because i'm assuming it's going to be really long so thank you very much for watching and let me know down below if you've read any of these books if you're a colleen hoover fan if you're not that keen i am on the fence of mm, that's how i feel about it so i don't know whether i should really read any more books because they're obviously not for me but I probably will because some of them do sound good. And Without Mary, it was actually really good what I'd read so far. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in my next video, which will probably be in the new year, um, ranking the books I read this year. So yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.